Have you ever had the caravan or trailer you were towing start to sway? It can be a scary phenomenon, especially because it usually happens unexpectedly and without apparent cause. The truth is, sway can affect any caravan, no matter how experienced you are, how well set up your rig is, or how strictly you follow conventional wisdom to try and minimise it. But on the surface, a caravan which is just dead weight on ball bearings being towed from directly in front of it shouldn't sway. It should just follow the car exactly where it's going. Why doesn't it always work like that? To find out, we've got Rob Funder, Technical and Manufacturing Manager from Alco, to explain exactly what a caravan is doing when it's swaying or snaking behind the tow vehicle. So if we look at it from above, as you're driving down the road and the snaking motion starts to develop, the caravan is actually travelling a longer distance. The wheels are travelling a longer distance than what the towing vehicle is. And if you're going down and the towing vehicle is going straight, and the caravan is moving to the side, because it's travelling a longer distance, it's actually getting faster, and when you get to a sway condition, to the worst possible condition, the caravan's actually trying to overtake you. But how is that possible? Understandably, we think of a caravan as a powerless vehicle, which it is. But power isn't what makes things move. Power is just a measure of how fast we can create energy. Energy is the capacity to make an object move, and a caravan in the right situation has plenty of that. One really simple example of a caravan's energy is potential energy which is the energy possessed by an object due to its position relative to another object. In the physics world, that's measured as mass times height times gravity. If you look at the car and caravan down the bottom of a hill, they don't have a lot of potential energy. But up here, there's a whole lot more. In fact, a really heavy caravan could have more potential energy than the car towing it. This energy is only going to make a caravan move in a straight line. If we want a caravan to start swaying, then a force has got to act on it from a sideways or a different direction. Or the car's got to change direction and the caravan will want to keep on going in the same line. As the side of a caravan does a fair imitation of a sail, a big gust of wind on the side or back will force it to move faster than the car. The draft from a passing truck or even the deceleration of the car will do essentially the same thing which is totally fine if the car and caravan stay on the same course. The caravan's extra energy will push the car forward, the car's brakes and gearing will slow the whole combination down. But what if the caravan doesn't push the car straight forward? What if it pushes it just a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right? In most cases, nothing much. The mass of the car, its grip on the road and its suspension will all combine to absorb the energy. Turn it into heat and you'll pull up to camp that night none the wiser. But sometimes that push will be enough to unbalance the connection between car and caravan just a little. How does it escalate? Anything in motion will keep moving and it will resist any change to that. We know that as inertia. Because the caravan has got a larger mass and because it has a larger sail area than the car, once it starts moving, it's going to keep moving. So how do you stop it? The common misconception is that you would accelerate the car to try and straighten out the caravan. But if we do the exact opposite, if we break the caravan, it pulls it into line with the car and it's slowing the whole combination down. It makes it, uh, it, makes it a much easier process. Which is exactly the principle behind Alco's ESC. Rob, in simple terms, can you tell me exactly how it works? Yeah, Brendan, it is a relatively simple concept. What we have mounted under the floor of the caravan is a small module. Inside that module is two accelerometers measuring what that's called the G-force, the sideways force of the caravan. You swerve to miss a, a kangaroo, for example, or you have a small amount of sway developing into a serious amount of sway. The G-forces that have generated are measured by the device and we apply all caravan brakes at once simultaneously, quicker than you can do it yourself if you tried to grab for the controller on your caravan, for example. So next time your caravan starts to develop a little sway, remember that it's just started to travel faster than your car. By using the override in your electric brake controller or having an electronic stability control system fitted to your caravan, you can simply and easily slow your caravan down before everything gets out of control.